The producer's right for all the talk about playoff Jimmy disappeared when the Heat needed him most. Was all the Jimmy Buckets hype unjustified? That's the that's so dumb. Sorry, producers. Guys, did Jimmy Butler have a disappointing finals? He did. Do Jimmy Butler did this Jimmy Butler finals remind you of anyone's finals? An undeniably great player. And if you're like, yeah, LeBron and 11, no, 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 no. That LeBron and 11 had an objectively bad series. Jimmy, the, these finals averaged 22, 5, and 6 on 41 from the field, 37 from 3. 22, 5, 6, 41, 37. In 2016... Stephen Curry, in those finals, averaged 23-5-4 on 40% from the field, 40% from three. So one more point, the same rebounds, two fewer assists, field goal percentage, one point less, three point percentage, three points more. It was not a great finals. It was not a disastrous debacle of a finals. And the idea... That we are going to, this is one of the things that I hate. I hated when it happened to LeBron. I hate when it happened to, I'll pick out some of my favorite guys, Mahomes in 2020. I hate when it happens really to anybody who gets penalized or more criticized for coming up a little short in the final round, then someone gets criticized that was beaten along the way to the final round. The uh, people the, today on the pre-show call for first things first, they were like, "Does Jimmy still deserve to be in club superstar?" And I almost, I almost ended the Zoom call. Like, what are we talking about? So you're not kicking Jason Tatum out of Club Superstar, who had his lunch eaten by Jimmy in the previous round, and that's why he didn't get to play in the finals, but now we're going to kill Jimmy because in the finals he wasn't great. And don't get me wrong, he wasn't great. Now last night, he was really bad until the end when it looked like he was going to have a vintage Playoff Jimmy moment with the threes and the free throws and getting them back. And then he had two really rough plays down the stretch. But this is where I think an interesting thing sports media does. And I got to say, I actually kind of agree with it. Is... We criticize more harshly. Two guys can have the same level of performance and receive very disparate amounts of criticism based on how close that performance was to what we think their peak performance is. Meaning... A player with slightly less talent or natural ability gets more of a pass than a player with immense amounts of natural ability that can't seem to rise in the biggest moments. And so there will be guys like Tracy McGrady who probably get a little unfairly maligned by history because those of us that watched him knew at his best he had an argument wasn't a strong argument but an argument that he was the best player in the entire sport conversely a guy i'm trying to think of a d example that's not jimmy butler but a guy whose overall talent level 
is not nearly that player's level who seems to consistently be getting the most out of it, we have massive admiration for those guys. And Bruce said this on TV yesterday, and I'd never heard it put like this, and I think he's right, that Jimmy's single best trait is his competitiveness. That that's what he is top three in the world at. Just raw competitiveness. And it did seem like he ran out of gas a bit. He didn't seem anywhere close to Joker when it came to best player on the court. And honestly, that's probably okay. And this is where, even though I, again, I picked the heat, so I probably should have seen this part coming. But this is where it is worthwhile reminding people that if you don't have one of the 25 greatest players in the history of the sport, or just let's just go the last 50 years, if you don't have one of the 20 best of the last 50 years, you're not winning a title unless you were on the 04 Pistons. If we can go from 1980 to now, and it's like, who did the champions have? Well, the entirety of the 80s, the champions were Kareem slash Magic, Bird, Moses slash Dr. J, Isaiah. Um, those are all top 20 of the last 50 years. The 90s, um, Michael Jordan, Akeem, Tim Duncan. Check, check, check. The 2000s, Shaq slash Kobe, the 04 Pistons, D. Wade slash Shaq. I, I'm not going to do this in exact order, but you guys are going to follow me, of course. Duncan a bunch of times. Dirk Nowitzki. Kevin Garnett, who is right there, along with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, who are not, but Kevin Garnett. LeBron James. Steph Curry. Duncan some more, or Duncan again. Kawhi Leonard would be the other, yeah, but he's not top 20 of the last 50 years, but he's a unique case because he was certainly trending towards that and his body betrayed him. And Giannis and LeBron again and Steph again and Durant with Steph and now Jokic who's in there. Jimmy Butler's are not the best player on champions, typically. And they should not be crushed for that. It is a very unique thing that in the NBA, post the 70s, essentially since the NBA-ABA merger, from 1980 to now, the worst pl player who was the best player on a champion, it is... And again, this is not an insult, but it is Chauncey and then Kawhi and then KG and Dirk. Those are the worst guys who were the best guys on a champion. Think about that. Honestly. And so... I don't think we should be in the business today of crushing Jimmy Butler. I think that'd be ridiculous. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.